Nothing else but devastating. Um, city officials in the city of Mariupol in Ukraine's southeast uh, say a maternity and children's hospital has been hit by several Russian airstrikes. They say it's been destroyed and they've described the damage as colossal. colossal. Uh, video has been posted online and it shows a horrific scene. Piles of smouldering rubble, smashed cars, holes where windows used to be in a building that we're told was that maternity and children's hospital. Now, Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, has tweeted describing this attack as an atrocity. He says there are children uh, and they're, uh, they're, they're trapped under the wreckage. This attack happened during what was supposed to be a ceasefire, allowing civilians to escape from that city. Uh, but yet again, that ceasefire has been broken. The Russian and Ukrainian foreign ministers will meet today in Turkey, in the first high-level contact between Kiev and Moscow since the war began. Both the Russian and Ukrainian delegations, which includes their respective foreign ministers, have arrived in Turkey. Both Lavrov and Kuleba held separate meetings with their Turkish counterpart just a short while ago. Now, Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who has pushed for Turkey to play a bigger role in the mediation process, has expressed hope that the talks can help bring about a ceasefire. Turkey is keen to maintain strong relations with both sides, despite the conflict. This is journey's end for one of the few remaining routes out of Russia. Two trains a day run from St. Petersburg to the Finnish capital Helsinki. It's a service that has seen a five-fold spike in bookings since the start of the war in Ukraine. Airspace closures have created bottlenecks for Russians with the means to leave. Hundreds have queued at the border with Latvia. A seat on the Helsinki train can mean an onward flight to anywhere in the world, but tickets are hard to come by. These trains were running at 20% of capacity before the start of the war. Now they're fully booked, with around 500 Russians arriving in Finland every day. Her state of preservation is just absolutely brilliant. There are no wood-consuming marine parasites in the Weddell Sea. So the wood is, is, is as fresh as the day the ship went down. You can see her paintwork. You can see the bolts. You can see the ship's name. You know, endurance curved across her stern and beneath it the, the, the great five-pointed star. But I've never, ever seen a wreck anything like as beautiful and as inspiring as this one.
North Korea says it will launch satellites to monitor the U.S. and its allies in the years ahead, according to state media on Thursday. Leader Kim Jong-un said a lot of military reconnaissance satellites would be put into orbit as part of a five-year plan announced in 2021. State media KCNA reported that Kim inspected the country's space agency this week and that Kim noted, quote, The purpose of developing and operating the military reconnaissance satellite is to provide the armed forces of the DPRK with real-time information on military actions against it by the aggression troops of the U.S. imperialism and its forces in South Korea, Japan, and the Pacific. The move may prove as controversial as the country's nuclear armed weapons tests because experts say the satellite uses the same ballistic missile technology banned by the UN Security Council. Gustavo Cárdenas, second from the left, is one of six executives of Citgo, the U.S.-based affiliate of Venezuela's state-owned oil company, sentenced to between 9 and 15 years in prison in Caracas. His release and that of Cuban-American Jorge Alberto Fernández, accused of terrorism for flying a drone in Venezuela, are the first tangible results of a secret meeting last weekend between Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro and three White House envoys. The U.S. applauds the men's release and hopes another seven American prisoners will soon follow. But it concedes the meeting had another key objective. And it's also true that we have uh, an interest globally uh, in maintaining a steady, steady supply uh, of energy, including through our diplomatic efforts. So all of these things come to bear when it comes to, uh, to Venezuela. The 57-year-old man who made history in January as the first person to receive a genetically modified pig's heart has died. Mark Bennett passed away Tuesday at the University of Maryland Medical Center, which said his condition began deteriorating several days ago. Bennett had terminal heart disease when he first came to the hospital as a patient in October and was deemed ineligible for a conventional heart transplant. But in a first-of-its-kind surgery, Bennett was implanted with a pig heart that had been genetically modified to prevent rejection, a procedure his son at the time called a miracle. The surgery was among the first to demonstrate the feasibility of a pig-to-human heart transplant, a field made possible by new gene editing tools. The transplanted heart performed, quote, very well for several weeks without any signs of rejection, the hospital said on Wednesday adding that Bennett was able to communicate with his family during his final hours.